Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Scott, Edge of 3D. Yeah, I know that's the old logo. I'll get to that in a future video. Anyway, you rooted your Creality K1 or your K1 Max. You've installed Mainsail. You open it up. What do you do now? Stick around. I'm going to show you what I do. Hey everyone, welcome back. So you rooted your machine, your K1, your K1 Max, your K1C. They all root basically the same. You followed my video or somebody else's video uh, and used the helper script. I'll put a link to that in the video description down below. And you open up Mainsail or Fluid. But I use Mainsail, so this video is going to be about Mainsail because I don't use Fluid. Can't tell you exactly how it works in Fluid, but a lot of things are the same. So you open up your machine. For the first time, you click on main sale, you get a screen. What do you do with it from there? There's a lot of information on there, and there's a lot of things you can do with it, and you can make it exactly the way you want it. So we're going to jump over there, and I'm going to show you what I do. So you open it up for the first time. Obviously, I had the machine warmed up here, and it's cooling back down. But this is the screen, the default that you're going to see. And up here, you're probably going to have about five preloaded files. I've already deleted them out of this machine. They're not ones that I ever use. So they're gone. But as you start scrolling down here, you're going to come to the macros. And all these macros. Well, we're going to get to those here in a minute and do something with those. But first... Your machine has a camera in it, and you can't see it on here. Let's make the camera work. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, little gear icons, click on that. Come over here on the left side of this interface settings. Scroll all the way down to webcams. Click add a webcam, and there you go. It's already found it. Put a name on it. It will not let you do anything without putting a name on it. And then, I don't like this frames per second counter always setting there so I hide that and then I just save the webcam and if we close out of that we go back and it automatically puts the webcam up here in the upper right of the screen unless you have a narrow monitor and I'm going to force this to go narrow there we go if you have a narrow monitor it puts it over here under the the standby or this is actually the machine status and this one you cannot move or do anything with you can minimize it but it's always going to be there everything else on the screen can be moved around i have a wide monitor most people do nowadays so this is going to be the wide monitor layout i'm going to show you where i want my webcam at we come back up here on the dashboard and everything here that has a blue check mark and these little bars next to it, you can move around. Status, you cannot move around. So I'm going to put my webcam right here at the top. My temperature is right underneath it. I'm going to leave the machine where it's at. I'm going to take and put the macros over here above the console. And you can see the mess that created here now. we got all these macros. Which ones do we need? Which ones do we not need? A lot of these macros you see over here are actually macros that are used by other macros to accomplish things, so they're not anything that you need as a standalone. A couple things you can do. You can just go in and get rid of the ones you don't want to use so that you don't see them, or you can set up macros with different groupings. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to macros here. And under management, if you leave it at simple, you can just go in here and close out ones you don't want. And if you watch over here on the right-hand side, as I close them out, they just disappear. Or well, let's turn them back on. And that's it. That's all you can do in simple. They're all there. You can't arrange them. You can't have them auto-hide when the machine is printing or anything like that. They are just there. So let's click on Expert. Now this is where we can add groups. And we're going to call this Group Filament. 
and we're going to use this for loading and unloading filament. So we don't need to have it on when the printer is printing. So right down here, there's options to have it show height if the printer's on standby, show height if the printer's paused, show height if it's printing. We're going to have it so it hides while it's printing. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to find load filament, just the basic one. Or load material, we'll add that, and then quit material. And we'll add that. And then we'll close this. So there's our first group, it's called filament. And if we go back up here to the dashboard, you can see it drops it over here in the far left column. Let's move it over here on top of the console, and there you can see it. That's where we can load material and quit material. Let's add another one, and we will call this one tuning. So just click Add a Group, name it Tuning. Same thing, don't need it up when it's printing. And we can go down through here and we can get anything we want to use for tuning the machine. I'm going to put in the belt shaper calibration. I don't use bed leveling. I just installed it because I installed everything that was available when I went through the uh, tutorial on how to use the um, installation helper script. And input shaper calibration. This one right here is the one I use because it does the input shaper and it automatically picks the best one and puts it into the machine's config file. Not necessarily the best way to do it. That's another video for another day. Um, it picks what it thinks is the best. I have found that that's not always the best. And then we continue on down here and we can PID the bed, PID the hot end, and that's really the only ones I use. You can go through the GitHub and you can read up on what each one of these does. And let's just close that out. And let's go back up here to our dashboard and we'll grab tuning and we'll put it over here right underneath filament. And there you go. So now when you scroll down over here, you don't have all of that macros. You just have the macros you want. And then you can do another one for like during a print, to pause a print, quit a print, which, you know, you have some of that up here, but uh, let's just do a, another macro. We'll add a group. We'll call it printing. And obviously we want, we want that one on when it's printing, so we'll leave that one right there. And if you go down through here, you can find a pause and a quit or stop, end print, end print point, end print with point without lifting. So end print is basically going to do the same thing as if you get to the end of your G code and it has the end print macro. It's going to stop the print in the same way. Uh, we'll go ahead and add that, but for now I'm just going to leave it like that. Dashboard, grab printing, well, grab it, move it over here to the very top, and there you go. If you want to end the print, you just click on that, and it'll go through the end print routine that you have stored in the entire macro. So that's it as far as setting up macro. You have a whole lot more things you can do on here, like your tool head. If you don't like this style, there's three styles, and that's under control. This style right here is called bars. You have this style right here, which is called circle. And basically these are your home buttons. So home X, home Y, home Z, home X and Y. This home's all. This turns off your stepper so you can manually move the head around. This is where your Z offsets are at. You'll use those when you're starting printing. Again, a different video for a different day. This is more about just getting the user interface here in mainsail set up. The last one here is cross. And I kind of like this one because front to back, left to right, up to down. So this moves your Y front to back, your X left to right, your Z up and down, home all, home X, Y, home Z, turn off your lead screws. And then this is the amount you want it to move with each 
So if you want it to move 100 millimeters, you're trying to move the bed down, you can do that. Click your down, it'll move it down. So I'm gonna leave that on this setting. Down here is your extrusion factor. And I change a couple of things in here. This is already set up, but I add a 99 millimeters per second extrusion feed rate. And that's not to extrude, because trust me, you're not gonna push any filament through there that fast. But what I use that for is when I'm purging material to change colors, I use a two to three millimeter length and a 99 millimeter per second extrusion feed rate and retract it. And I'll show you here what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and heat the hot end up. We'll run it up to 250 on the extruder. And when it gets up to temperature, I'll show you what I do with these right here. While that's heating, I'm gonna move this up so that it will be next to this and you can see in real time what I'm doing. So let's jump over here, go to our dashboard, and I'm just gonna move extruder above the tool head. Now it's sitting right here next to the webcam. We'll let this warm up and then you'll be able to see right here as I extrude the filament out and then retract it what it does. Okay, we're up at temperature now. And let's say for the sake of argument that I was printing in black filament and I'm changing to a white or a light gray or silver or something like that. As you'll find out real quick, it probably isn't gonna purge enough to completely clear the black out in your first few millimeters of print. So let's purge some more material out of there. So we're gonna purge 50 millimeter and we're gonna purge it in 10 millimeters per second. I'm gonna click extrude. You'll see it starting to come out over here. And then in order to prevent it from continuing to ooze, I'm gonna go two millimeters of length with a 99 millimeter per second feed rate, and I'm going to hit retract, and it sucks it back up real quick. That's really it. That's quick and dirty rundown of mainsail. There's other things in here, your height map. Everybody wants to see their height map. That's mine. Obviously that was a 15 by 15 probe, so there's a whole lot of probe points on there. It is what it is. There's only so much you can do with these beds. Any G-code files that you load into the machine, they'll all be stored here. History tells you how many hours total print time since the last time you wiped the machine the longest print you've done, total filament used, how many jobs you've printed. This is all the different uh, things that I've printed on this machine since I last rooted it. Any time lapses you have, they're stored in here. This isn't much of a print, but here we go. It's just a quick time lapse. And obviously from here, you can download it to your desktop and use it in videos or put it on socials. That's where your time lapse is at. In here, in your machine, this is where all your config files are at. Over here tells you the load on all the different, this MCU here would be your main motherboard. The leveling MCU is actually the daughter board that's up underneath the bed that operates all of the load cells. Your nozzle MCU, that's your board in the tool head. And then the Raspberry Pi, which this really doesn't have a Raspberry Pi. It's just a separate chip on the motherboard, but it's monitoring that. And then if any of your stuff needs updated, that's all right here. Mine's all up to date. Be careful with those. Sometimes when you click the update all down here, it'll give you lots of warnings and it can break. So that's it. There we go. That's really quick walkthrough of mainsail. You can customize it so many different ways and get it exactly the way you want it. Make it yours. Get everything positioned on there exactly where it works for you and your workflow. And again, there's a whole lot of macros that come with the installation helper script. He's got detailed descriptions over on his GitHub of exactly what each one of those macros do, or it refers you to the Clipper documentation, if it's just a standard Clipper macro. But you can read up on those macros, learn what they do. Again, a lot of them that show up initially are sub-macros that are being used by others to accomplish something. So there's no need to have them visible. Anyway, if you like these videos, hit the thumbs up button somewhere down here. The subscribe button if you want to see more. There'll be a bell icon somewhere. Click on that. You'll see when I publish the next video. Not sure exactly what it's going to be yet. I've got a mini mill to build. I've got a Mercury one to build. And I want to do some work with, uh, I need to replace that, that sign right there. I need to put it in the new Edge of 3D logo. So 
probably do a video on how I design that in Fusion 360 and print those out. That most likely will be the next one, but you never know. Something else may come up. Something like a trebuchet or who knows. Anyway, I appreciate each and every single one of you that stick around and watch these videos. I couldn't do this without you guys. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon. If you want to see something different or you have questions about this video and any of the stuff I go over, drop a comment down below. I try to read and respond to every single comment. And as always, peace out.